everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video is going to be the making of this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. So starting with the fabric, I'm using this stretch knit fabric, four-way stretch knit fabric I got from the textile centre. There's a little bit of gold shot through it, so really lovely for a holiday type of top. And then this time I'm showing the pattern, so I've just traced off my knit block. I've taken off about an inch and a half from the shoulder and given myself a bit of a boat neck there, straightened out the side seam and given myself a hem allowance, facing at the top. And then for the back, same thing, just traced off my knit block, taken the same inch and a half off the shoulder, straightened out my side seam and given myself that hem allowance. Same facing on the back. And for the rest of the pattern, so for the boat neck and the coil neck, I just followed a tutorial that the lovely Diane Dazelle has uploaded, which I shall link down below. Super quick and easy to follow. And then for my sleeve, just my standard knit sleeve, no adjustments made. And then on to the cutting out. So this is my front piece. My fabric underneath is on the fold. Just one notch at the hem and one notch at my sleeve. And then onto the back. Same thing here again, my fabric underneath is on the fold. And then just a double notch at my sleeve and one notch at my hem and onto the sleeve. So I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. And then just the standard notches. So around my sleeve head and one on either side of my hem. That's all my cutting out done. And now on to joining up the bodice front and back and I'm going to do that at the shoulder seams first of all. So I'm just lining up my shoulder seams and my facing pieces, pinning, exactly the same thing on the other side, making sure everything is lined up nice and accurately. And then taking to the sewing machine to stitch in place. So I'm using a zigzag stitch here, a very tiny little zigzag stitch here. And when I get to the bottom of the facing piece, I'm pivoting and then along the shoulder seam. Trying to stick to my one centimeter seam allowance here. And that's how that looks. And when it's all turned in, nice and neat. So I've just went ahead and finished that seam on the overlocker. And now on to attaching the sleeve. So I'm first of all lining up the notch at the head of the sleeve with the shoulder seam. And then my notches both front and back. And then my side seams. Ready for stitching. And this time I'm just stitching on the overlocker Again, at my one centimetre seam allowance. And that's how that looks. And now on to closing up the bodice at the side seams. But before I do that, I want to just run some overlock stitches along the hem of the sleeve, just to keep that nice and neat. So just showing here, I'm lining up the sleeve seam the whole way along and the bodice seams front and back. So just stitching that hem as I mentioned, nice and neat. And then on to closing up those side seams. When I get to the sleeve seam, I'm making sure that front and back match up nice and neatly. And that's that done. 
I want to give myself some ties for the back neck so I've just cut myself a strip of fabric about an inch wide and about 30 centimeters long folded it in half along its length and pinned and then ran that through the overlocker just along its edge left myself a little tail of overlock thread tied that to the end of a darning needle and I'm using that then to pull through the fabric to the inside so just threading that the whole way through this is just a super quick and easy way to make little ties which I really like and I'm adding these ties because I find that with cowl neck tops they do tend to flop open a little and I don't want there to be any danger of that with this top so I've done that whole process twice and made myself two ties, one for each side and I've just hand stitched the ends to make them nice and neat and close them up and now I'm just joining those ties to the shoulder seam in the seam allowance about a centimetre or so away from the sleeve head I just pinned that in place and off camera just ran a couple of stitches on the sewing machine just to hold it all nicely and now I want to attach the facing to the shoulder seam so I'm folding at that pivot point you see me so earlier and pinning the seam allowance of the facing to the seam allowance of the shoulder and I'm just going to stitch that down so I'm stitching here within the seam allowance back stitching at the start and the end and that's how that looks super neat and that'll just make sure that the facing stays in place so really like that and now I just want to stitch in the ditch just to hold that tie where I want it to be so I want it to be just at the edge of the neck and shoulder seam so as I say running a couple of stitches just in the ditch catching the tie on the back and that will make sure it's not going to move out of place and believe it or not <laughs> that is the neckline of this little top complete so I've just pressed it all in place and ran the facing edge through the overlocker just to tidy that up and the very last thing I have to do is deal with the hems on both the sleeves and the bodice so I've just pressed those up by my seam allowance and pinned those in place and I've decided because this is an occasion top I want to use blind hems here so the first step to that process is to tack or baste my hems in place which is what I'm doing here so I'm stitching with the longest stitch length I have on my machine and I'm about five mils away from the seam you see on the left hand side so from those overlock stitches so you can see that here and then I'm going to fold the hem inside the sleeve and press that in place so just showing this again here so that's my line of basting stitches I'm folding the hem inside leaving out that five mil and pressing so I'm giving myself a crease line along that line of base stitches and now I'm going to pop on my blind hem foot I'm going to use the stretch stitch for blind hems on my machine which is that one I'm just showing that again so my hem is up inside the sleeve I'm lining up my foot with that crease line that I just pressed and just stitching the whole way around and I've slowed this footage right down just so that you can see what this stitch is actually doing so it's stitching a zigzag stitch for seven stitches and then picking up just one little stitch of the hem itself so with this stitch you'll barely be able to see it from the outside after it's all pressed neatly so it's just a nice one to use for a top that's a little bit more special so just need to remove my basting stitches there and give that a good press and I'm doing exactly the same thing here again so I'm following exactly the same process so I've ran my line of basting stitches about five mil away from the edge I've then pressed the hem up in underneath leaving that five mil edge of fabric I then lined up the crease line that I pressed with the middle of my foot 
and just running that same stitch the whole way around and just to remove that basting stitch and this is what that actual blind hem looks like so you can see just those one little stitch picking up the outside so a good press and this little top is complete so you can see here that's the bottom of the sleeves so you can see that the hem is there but it's not as visible as it would be with a twin needle or just a zigzag stitch so it's super nice and neat it's just showing the rest of the top here so my ties my facing all in underneath and my coil at the back and this is what it looks like on so I love this top number one because it is so simple easy to make really quick but also because it's nice and plain and simple from the front but then there's a little bit of a party going on in the back so love that it's super comfortable as I say a really perfect one in a nice sort of sparkly fabric like this for an occasion so absolutely love this one so I really hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up if you've not yet subscribed please do and I shall see you on Friday in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye folks!